are you ready to know the details about the most famous model of all complex systems? The one you'll find everywhere, literally everywhere, if you happen to study statistical physics, complex systems, or even semiconductors? Give me a break. But first, let's talk a bit about the physicist that created it, Ernst Eisen. Born in Cologne in 1900, he was a promising young scientist who created this model when he was only 24 years old. However, he was Jew and German. And when Hitler came to power in 1933, he was barred from teaching and researching. He sought refuge in Luxembourg while waiting for a ship to take him to the United States. Unfortunately, the Nazis invited Luxembourg and forced Ising to work for the army. He never published again. Never. Ever. Again. However, he got to the States in 1947, became a very loved teacher and lived for 98 years. It was in 1949 when he found that his model had become hugely known. Now each year, hundreds of papers are published that use the model. Now we will talk about the model itself. It is very famous because, despite being quite simple, it shows interesting complex behavior, and it was a milestone for studying complexity on different systems. The model represents the interaction of the spins of the electrons in metals. For those who aren't very familiar with physics, the spin is a characteristic of the fermions, sort of an angular momentum which points on a particular direction, exerting force to charge particles. Since a metal has many electrons, we are going to consider an infinite two-dimensional square lattice, which has an, an electron on every vertex. In addition to that, in this model the spin of each electron can be only oriented up or down, which is a huge simplification, but we are physicists, that's what we do. And depending on the configuration of the spins in the lattice, the energy of the system will change. So, we want to analyze this dependence of temperature, energy, and spin structure. As I said, the model is very simple. Every electron interacts only with their nearest neighbors. In this case, there are only four, and this interaction will affect positively or negatively to the system's energy. But, why does it change? We physicists use the concept of Hamiltonian to study the energy and behavior of a system. Our system's Hamiltonian depends on the spins and the strength of their interaction. We can define too the probability of having one spin configuration or other, depending on the system's temperature. Here is the formula. Systems tend to minimize the energy, and here it happens in such a way that it will have very different behavior at low and high temperatures. Spins will align in clusters or not. We therefore say that the system has two phases the disorder phase and the order phase. Between them, the system will undergo a phase transition, which occurs at a critical temperature and exhibits peculiar properties. But what's the difference between them? First, we can define the magnetization as the total angular momentum of all the spins, so that if we consider that the up spins add 1 to the value of our magnetization and down spins subtract 1, the difference between the number of up and down spins will be our total magnetization. When we are at the disorder phase, the magnetization equals zero, and there are approximately the same number of up and down spins. On the other side, for the order phase, m is not equal to zero, and we can see how clusters emerge. The magnetization can be considered the order parameter, since it determines whether we are in a phase or the other. By the way, the point at which a system changes between phases, in this case the critical temperature, it's called critical point! Now, we'll see a simulation on how the spins behave on every phase and its dependence with temperature. In this simulation, we observe that for temperatures higher to the critical temperature, no pattern exists. Spins are changing constantly their orientation, and on average, there is the same amount of up and down spins. As we said before, this is called the disorder phase, which has high entropy and in which magnetization equals zero. However, as we reduce the system's temperature, we see that the spins start to stabilize. For temperatures lower to the critical temperature, the magnetization is different from zero, and big regions of spins start to align, despite little fluctuations. Nevertheless, if we wait enough time, our metal will be fully magnetized either up or down. This is the order phase of lower entropy. 
Now, let's focus on the critical temperature. What happens at the phase transition? The answer is self-similarity. Semi-stable patterns emerge, which are also called scale invariant, meaning that no matter how many times we zoom in or out, our system's behavior will have the same structure. Cool, isn't it? This is fractal behavior. I told you! This system is very simple but quite interesting. We've seen phase transition and critical phenomena. Furthermore, a fun debate arises. There has been a historical tendency to study fundamental physics, looking only at the smallest components in the universe, electrons, neutrinos, etc. Trying to find universal laws which will explain all the phenomena in the universe in terms of these particles and forces. However, the existence of two very different phases and the transition from one to the other is a behavior of the Ising model and many other systems, which is impossible to deduce by studying exclusively the behavior of individual electrons through the particle physics perspective. We need to study many-body systems and look for changes of the collective behavior using simple concepts as the order parameter, focusing on the interrelation of the parts, not on the parts themselves. You don't need to solve the Schrodinger equation one million times to study metals. That's the beauty of the physics of complex systems, and at the same time is the cause of the Ising's model's popularity. The basic idea of considering the nearest neighbors and focusing on the interaction of the parts started a new way of research which encompass ecosystems, social behavior, neural networks, protein folding, and are very, very, very long, etc.